Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to do something real quick. Let's just pray first. Um, if you know me or if you've ever seen me in my element, whether that be dance, that is a completely different person than you'll get today. But one thing about it that you will get, the same person that you see on Sundays, the same person you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Doesn't mean that I don't mess up. Doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes. Doesn't mean that, that I don't have flaws. But what it does mean is this right here. It just means that, God, I'm transparent enough. I'm, I'm transparent enough to let you do whatever it is that you need to do to let other people see my flaws so that maybe they can see me and see what it is that you're doing in my life and just strengthen them and encourage them right where they are. Amen. Let's pray real quick. Father God, how we thank you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you because you are great. You are mighty. Father God, we thank you because you've kept us even when we didn't want to be kept. Lord God, we thank you for just allowing us to be in your presence, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for how you're always making a way, how you're always moving behind the scenes in our lives. Even when we can't see you, you're still moving. So we say thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for just giving us strength this morning just to come into your house. I ask that as I speak on today, Lord God, that this word not be about me and not be about what they see on the outside, Lord God, but it be about you. Lord, I pray that you would get all the glory and all the honor, Father God. Just be with us on today. And Father God, most of all, I ask that someone's heart be changed. Father God, that you would do the same thing for them, Lord God, that you did for me. Lord God, and I just thank you, Father God, because when you found me, God, you didn't leave me where you found me, God. So I just thank you, Father God. Lord, I just worship you on today. Have your way in this place, Lord God. Lord God, use me for your service. Fill my mouth with the words that you have for your people. I just bless you. I thank you. Lord, we love you. You're so amazing just to worship in your presence oh god have your way let your anointing fall fresh in this place in jesus name amen oh somebody give god praise in this place i'm just so thankful this morning because he didn't leave me where he found me take a moment and look over your life and look where you were and look where you are now he didn't leave you where he found you Amen. I know y'all see me all dressed up and all of this kind of stuff, right? But if I would have showed you a picture of my life, if I would describe my life 10 years ago, I'm 32 now. If I would have showed you my life at 22, you wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. But God, you're so good. Your mercy, your grace. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank my wife. for always sticking by me. Even when I couldn't see, even when I was ready to give it up, even when I said, you know what? Y'all can have this God stuff. I'm through. She still prayed for me. How many of you know you need people that'll continue to pray for you even when you don't have the strength to pray for yourself? Even when you're not speaking to them, can I be transparent for just a moment? Even when you're not speaking to them, even when you live in a house with them and you walk past them like they're not there, they're still praying for you. So I thank you. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my children. I thank you all for just receiving me just as I am. We're going to move into the word. If you have your Bible or your phone, 
that you have your Bible on, hold it up for me. This is just a little something that we do in you, church, and I just believe it's very crucial to us and for us. Everything you need is in the word. Say that after me. Everything I need is in the word. You can only say that if you believe it, but everything I need is in the word. If you sit down at a table to eat, you don't sit down without utensils, do you? So why do we sometimes come to church without our utensils? Everything you need is in the word. Let's go. I know the hour is spent. I won't be before you long. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. When you've got it, say, I got it. Second Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight, period. For we walk by faith and not by sight, period. A period normally denotes that you have to stop. You can't breeze through it. You have to stop. You may be seated. I want to give you one more scripture. And it'll probably sound very familiar to you. Hebrews 11 and 1. I'm going to read it two ways says faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Another version reads, it is the fundamental fact of existence. I'm sorry, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Go with me for a moment. Dark, with little or no light, inky, unlit, unilluminated, underlit, starless, moonless, dingy, gloomy, dusky, shadowy, shady, stygian black, pitch black, jet black, total darkness. Everything seems out of focus. There is a show that comes on the sci-fi channel where the contestants are thrust into a room of total blackness. They are unable to see their hands in front of their face. They are put to the test of figuring out their environment through their other senses of taste and smell without lack of vision. One contestant is put up on a plank about a foot off the ground as a tightrope walker would be. She can literally put one foot on the floor and the other on the plank and still be standing. Mind you, she's in total darkness. She doesn't realize that she can actually stand on her own. Her imagination tells her that she will fall. The game show host says, be careful, Cindy. It's a long way down. Here's the reason why he says it's a long way down. He says that it's a long way down. Mind you, we are in total blackness. It is pitch black. I can't see nothing. I can't even see my hand in front of my face. So what do I have to rely on? Either something that I hear, something that I smell, or something that I taste. But if somebody tells me and I have no vision and I cannot see, if they tell me it's a long way down, my imagination says, wait a minute, it's a long way down. Do we really want to do this? Is this the direction we want to go in? 
That's what our imagination tells us. She begins to wobble a little bit. She wobbles. She wobbles. She wobbles. And eventually she falls off. And when she falls off, she lets out a loud scream. Oh, my God. And when she hits the floor, she simply says, is that all? The game show host says this. Remember, it's only a game. I want to talk about faith in total blackout. The total blackout is not a game. It is your life. Let's take a moment and talk about faith. In Hebrews 11 and 1, which is considered the Hall of Fame of faith, if you will. Everybody that did anything that was great at faith, you get your name on the wall. They got you up there. Here are some examples. By faith, Abel. By faith, Noah. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. Moses died by faith. Hebrews 11 and 13 says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were assured of them. Can I give you something? Faith does not necessarily mean that I get something. Can I say that again? Faith, let, let me, let me. Give me once. Let me say it like this. Faith don't, faith, faith, faith don't mean I get nothing. Faith, I don't get nothing, man. I got faith, but, you know, I, I really don't get nothing. Faith does not mean that you get something. Faith, faith, faith. Let me say it another way. I'm going to put a clause in for the word faith. Act as if what is hoped for is reality. Can I go a step further? Faith is the substance, 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 the essence, the reality, the evidence, the proof and conviction of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Total blackout. Total blackout. Here's where you and I come in. We lose faith. When we cannot see or trace what God is doing. The world will even tell you that God isn't real. Can we, can we be honest in here? Let me give you somebody who had homeboys that told him that he must have done something wrong. They assumed that he must have done some foul deed to receive the kind of treatment that he was receiving. You might know this dude. You, 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 you probably know this brother. Goes by the name of Job. Job 2.11 says this. Now when Job's three friends heard of all of this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place. Elithaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, Zophar the Namathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. We look for other ways to justify our decline in belief and faith. We even look for scriptures to justify what we think is right. Oh, I ain't talking about nobody in here. I'm not talking about anybody in here. You know those kind of people. You know you'll call your homeboy or your homegirl first. Why you call them first? Y'all heard Job's friends came where he was. Hey, Job, we, uh, we heard about the little issue you got, Doc. Um, I mean, I don't know what to say, but we going we to comfort you and we going to mourn with you. We call out our partners because we know that however we feeling, Nine times out of ten, that's how they feeling. Oh, y'all not going to talk to me. Uh, I got a few people like, uh, you know what? Oh, man, I don't believe. We call those people 
that we know will agree with us. We live in a world that tells us at times that we must have done something wrong because by faith, God hasn't answered our prayers yet. Remember I said by faith. Can I give it to you like this? Has he answered? But is your faith so low, so pitch black, so dark in total darkness that you can't even open your eyes and begin to see that he has answered just in a different way than you expected? My partner, Job. At least Job had enough, enough sense to even when his partners, his homeboys, like, look, man, I know you're feeling like that, but uh, what about God, man? Like, what's, what's up? Like, wh what is he doing? Here's, here's, what, here's what Job said. Job 9.10 says, he does great things past finding out. Yes, wonders without numbers. The reality for us is this right here. God is constantly at work around you, failing to recognize his activity does not negate this reality. Just because you don't see that God is moving all the while and you standing and he's maybe one in a minute they'll catch it. He's moving. And you stand there saying, God, I don't know where you at. Where are you? I can't see you. All the while, he's moving. He's steady moving. God, you said you're going to work it out. Well, I did work it out. Go back a couple steps. Look, I'm still moving. Just because I don't recognize the way that he's moving does not negate the fact that he's moving. He does wonders without numbers. Am I helping anybody? This brings me to my first point. Now, these, it may get a little rough, but y'all hang in there. Y'all hang in there. It got a little rough for me because before I can share something with you, I have to be in it. It has to, it has to rest on my heart. Here's our first point. During total blackout, when you feel like you're in total blackout and you can't see anything and you can't trace God and you don't know what it is that he's doing, we must continue to focus on God. I know it's hard to focus on God and keep walking in faith in total blackout, but don't focus on the enemy or the situation. We must continue to focus on Jesus. You may know the story of Peter. Peter said, Master, if it is you, then bid me to come. Why did Peter do that? You know what, Jesus, if it's you, like, tell me to come on. Tell me to come. Peter was fearful, like many of us are at times, when we're walking in total darkness. Peter steps out of the boat. He's focused on Jesus. Jesus bid me to come. He begins to walk. He's walking, and Peter like, oh, okay, I got this. And the moment that he looks to the left or he takes his focus off of Jesus, he begins to sink. But when he focuses back on Jesus, he's stable again. We have to keep our focus on Jesus. Here is, here is something else. All things could be going great for us. We got a great family life, a great job. For my students, a honor roll star athlete. But the moment that we lose sight by hanging with the wrong people at the office, gossiping at the water cooler, or hanging with the wrong friends at school, we lose focus on what we are in those arenas to do. And sometimes God allows us to sink a little bit so that we can put our focus back on him. You're probably saying, you know what, Minister Cody, that sounds all good. I appreciate it, but how can I do that? How do I do that? How do I keep my focus on Jesus with everything that's going on around me, everything that's going on in the world? How do I keep my focus on Jesus? 
Remember earlier when I said everything that you need is in the word? Let me give you two proverbial implementation tools for my students. Proverbial means. Let me, let me, excuse me, y'all. I'm going to step out of big church. I'm going to step into you church just for a second. Proverbial. This is what proverbial means. It means something that is, that, that maybe it's a saying, maybe it's a quote, something, a tool that you use to drive you forward into success. Proverbial. A proverbial implementation tool. Let me take off proverbial. A successful implementation tool. Here's two. Remember, we're talking about focus, focusing on Jesus, keeping our focus, right? Colossians 3 and 2. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. That's the first one. The other one. Proverbs 4 and 2, we're focused, we're focused. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. If I am walking, if I'm walking and I'm looking forward, what do I see? I see what's in front of me, right? Right? I'm looking and I see what's in front of me. But if I'm walking like this right here, there's no way I can see what's coming to me and what's out before me. So normally what happens is when we lose focus, we're, we're shocked. We're shocked. We're shocked. I'm going to go this way because I don't want to go off. We lose focus like this. I'm looking. And all of a sudden, something. Lord, what happened? We shocked. God said, focus. I knew it was coming, but had you been looking and focusing on me, I'd have been able to say, you know what, Cody? I know you focus, but guess what? When you get down there, weave to the right a little bit. Uh, hello. I'm focused. I know when I go into the office this morning, they're going to be tripping. Lord, I need you. Focus. I know that there's going to be some things somebody's going to call. Focus. Focus. We've got to focus on Jesus in total blackness. Point two, I'm going to move forward. Keep praying. I know that sounds funny, right? We say that all the time. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. I don't know what to do over there about what they're doing. Keep praying. Keep praying. I know it's hard to keep praying and walking in faith in a total blackout. James 4, 3 says it like this. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. So you can spend it on your passions. Here's where we come in. We should always be seeking guidance. We shouldn't just be asking for God's blessings just to satisfy our cravings for personal comfort. God wants us to have an abundant life. He wants to give us abundant life. He blesses us so that we can pass it on to others. He blesses us so we can live according to his plan. Ouch. I know that hurt. I know that hurt. Well, God, you know, I thought by 35, I was going to be married and I was going to have a little white picket fence and an Audi in the driveway. And when I get to 35, I'm upset. <laughs> I got a Camry in the driveway. The grass ain't cut. The pool need to be clean. But God blesses us according to his plan, not ours. His plan. So we have to keep praying, and we have to be careful of the motives in which we're asking for stuff for. We have to keep talking to God and allow him to keep talking to us. Remember, the game show host keeps talking to the contestant, psyching them out or making them doubt. But as long as we keep praying, talking to God and listening to him, he will assure us that we will be victorious in walking by faith. While we are in the dark, we forget that we've asked to be in the dark. You know when you begin praying that God would increase your faith? 
that he would bless your family, that he would give you more patience, that he would deliver a family member, that he would bless you with a higher paying job so that you could do more for the kingdom. Motives. We have to always remember and check our motives before we enter into a total blackout. Prayer is essential to navigating through darkness. We can't forget to keep praying while we are experiencing different emotions and levels of uncertainty in our faith. Ephesians 6, 18. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times. That means on every occasion and every season in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. Remember how I told you when you're in the dark? You have to listen because you cannot see. We walk by faith, not by sight. You have to listen. You have to keep praying. So as long as you are talking to him, he's talking to you. You know what, Cody, when you get down there, make a left. Okay. When you get over there, make a right. Even though I can't see, I'm listening and I'm communicating with him. So as long as I'm communicating with him, he's still guiding me. I hate to say it like this, but he is a GPS. He's always guiding me. And here's another one. Sometimes in the GPS, the GPS may not always be updated. You know, when you look on your phone and you're looking at the GPS and you get down here, you're like, they said turn on Sandy Lane. There is no Sandy Lane. Sandy Lane been closed about five years, but they've not updated. But guess what? Guess what the GPS does? Rerouting. Rerouting. It automatically reroutes you. So as long as I'm listening and I'm communicating with him, he'll give me guidance. He'll reroute me when I need to be rerouted. Here is another way. This is the message version. And this made it so clear to me about praying, listening, and communicating with God. This is what the message version says. Be prepared. You are up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. You got to keep talking. You got to keep talking. You have to keep talking, listening. Okay, God, all right, all right. Um, I don't know how they're going to do this. They told me that they are going to come cut the lights off in 72 hours. I don't know how you're going to do this, but as long as I am talking, he will tell you, hey, you know what? Go here, do this. But you have to be listening and communicating with him. Prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. In this case, we can't keep our eyes open physically. But in the spiritual, he is our eyes. He guides us. He is our eyes. Keep each other's spirit up so that no one falls behind or drops out. These verses, these things that that were talked about in these verses... Talk about the armor of God and how every spiritual weapon that God gives us should be operative in our lives. You know how I talked about everything that you need is in the word? Guess what? It's right here. But if you don't pick it up and you don't get in there, you don't know which tool that you're supposed to use. I'm a painter. I'm an artist. I'm a creative. That's like... If my brother Anthony calls me and he says, hey, Cody, man, look, I need your help. I need you uh, to come help me change the oil on my car. Mind y'all, I don't uh, manual labor. That's not my, uh, I, don't, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't do that. Sorry, it's just not my thing. Not my thing. I stand there and watch. <laughs> manual labor is not my thing. The only thing most of the time that I would rather have under my fingernails is paint or something that has to do with art. Oil, grease, no, I'm good. 
I'm, I, I pass. But he says, Cody, listen, I need you to help me come change my oil. Okay, I'm on my way. And he's expecting me. Like, yeah, my bro going to come help me change my oil. I can save a little bit of money. And I get there. I got on a smock. I got on a painter's beret. And I got my palette of paint. I show up. We're going to change oil, right? You're going to paint some oil. What you... If I know what tools I should be using, I can get the job done. Now, granted, how I use them, that may be something completely different. But if I at least show up, I don't, this is bad. I don't even know what you're supposed to use to change oil, but I figure it's a ranch or something, or a, a ranch. You need an oil filter. You need something to put the oil in. But if I at least know, okay, if I at least show up with those things, he might think I may be able to do a little something. I might be able to help a little bit. You have to know how to apply the tools that you have. They're in the word. And my last point, this one was tough for me. They were all tough for me, but this one was really tough for me. Rejoice in the dark. Mind you, you can't see. You cannot see. Rejoice in the dark. It takes faith to rejoice when you cannot see. It takes faith to rejoice when you cannot see. Psalm 91, 1 through 16. I know it's a lot, but I'm going to give you the message version, but I think it's so crucial. It's crucial. You who sit down in the, in, in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Say this, God, you are my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps. Shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you are perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night. Not flying arrows in the day. Not disease that prowls through the darkness. Not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around you, drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched, watch it, and watch it all from a distance, and watch the wicked turn into corpses. Yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from failing. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. 14, 14 through 16, last two verses. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if you only get to know and trust me. Call me. I'll answer. I'll be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you. And guess what? This is what God says. And then throw you a party. Now, now I don't know about y'all, but I like to do a little dancing myself. But if God gives you all of these things, he'll protect you. What does he require? Call me. I'll answer. And even when you mess up, even with your mistakes, I'll be there to help you. So even when I'm in total darkness, he's right there with me to help me. Your attitude and your demeanor when it's dark will dictate what you do when the light comes on. When you see athletes accomplish great feats or come back from a 3-1 deficit to make history, they don't wait until the victory is complete before they rejoice. If the game is close and they score points, knowing it's not over, they celebrate right where they are. Although they may not fully know the outcome, but they believe that every point counts as a closer step to victory. That's how, what, that's how we must be as believers. Even when we can't see it up close, but we can see it from afar, we must rejoice right where we are. 
If it's at the office, take you a break. Get in there, get you a one-two. Get you a one-two. If you're in the car, pull over. Praise him on the shoulder. Yeah, they probably going to catch you on Snapchat, <laughs> on Instagram. But they have no idea. If you're at school, go in on your lunch break and rejoice on your way to the cafeteria for that aid that you just made that helps you obtain the GPA that'll get you into any school in the country. We cannot be afraid to let others see us rejoice in the dark. Here's my close and I'm closing. Can I tell you about somebody? Can I tell you about a man named Jesus? He conquered darkness and he rose on the third day to save you and me. He went through a total blackout all the while through every test and every trial through vicious torment that he received he never lost focus on his father it seems that just for a moment when Jesus cried out in a Lord in a loud voice my God my God why have you forsaken me just for a moment it seems that he lost faith We get this way at times when we feel that God isn't near. Jesus kept praying, and in the end, we received the benefits of the ultimate sacrifice. So why can't you rejoice in the darkness and share your testimony? Keep the faith in, total, in a total blackout. Even when you can't trace him, your faith is what sustains you in the dark. God is always talking, even when it's dark. Keep praying and keep listening to him. If before you entered into total darkness, I gave you a flashlight and I told you where everything was in the room, it'd make it easier to navigate, right? But where does that leave your trust and faith in God? And how does he get the glory? Revelation 12, 11 says this. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. My only thing, if you don't get anything else that I said today. Maybe you're in a season of total darkness. But are you focused on God? Are you praying and communicating with him? And even though it's dark and you may not even be able to see your feet, can you rejoice right where you are? Let's pray. I'm not going to ask you to lift your hands. You know where you are with God. You know where you are. You may be in a season of darkness. You may be headed into a season of darkness and not realizing it. But I just want to pray for you. Father God, we bless you. We thank you because you are so mighty. We thank you, God, that you give us the tools to navigate through the darkness. We thank you that all the while, while we may be in the dark or we may be headed in the dark, you're still moving. So I pray for that person that may be in darkness right now. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would increase their faith, that you would be with them, God. Give them a reminder to let them know, I'm right here with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Father God, and I pray that we are able to share our testimony with somebody else that they too may be able to rejoice. Lord, we love you. We thank you because you're such a great father. You are already working before we even speak it. The moment that we begin to think it, you're already moving. So I thank you, Lord God. Lord, I pray that this word would just saturate your people. I pray that it be something that they can hold on to during the week. 
Thank you, God. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.